Hello and welcome back. And before we start today's video, a very quick disclaimer. This is going to be a miserable video. This is probably going to be one of the most, if not the most miserable video I've ever put out here on the channel. We are talking about a rubbish subject, which is going to be broken down into several more rubbish, horrible subjects. So if you're already in a lousy mood, if you're already having a lousy day, can I recommend you click save, bookmark, whatever, and come back to it later, because this is going to be a tough old vid to get through. But for now, let's crack on with the suck. Let's go. That is right, as the miserable introduction to this video goes in, this is going to be talking about hardware shortages, why they are still a thing halfway through 2022, how they're going to continue into 2023, or and all of the factors that have got us to this place. Now, straight away, I should highlight, I did do a video about this last year in April 2021, where we were talking about the state of hardware shortages, where we think they were going and what caused them. And I've got to say that although we're going to touch on a number of those factors, again, we're going to be going into more detail on those, how they've kind of evolved further into now, and some brand new hurdles that are hitting the world globally in a number of different ways that are causing these shortages now, and how they're going to continue to hit us in at least the next year to a year and a half the TLDR on this is quite simply that there's fewer new releases out there, that there is lower stock allocation globally on pretty much all modern hardware right now. Um, old hardware is seeing much lower um, frequency in kinds of deals and lower price point, and we're seeing that old hardware sticking around and its price point not getting any lower right now. We're seeing uh, mid-series alterations continuously, where we're seeing the hardware inside a lot of these devices changing subtly and in big ways as well a lot of the time with data sheets being updated a lot of time not updated and that the global release schedule a lot of hardware is completely out of sync now those points are going to be going into a lot more detail at the end of the video but that's the big impact of all of these so straight away as we go through this video i also think i should highlight this isn't bbc news it's certainly not fox news god damn no but this is not a completely legitimate news source right now. Everything we are saying on this comes from other sources. So whenever I reference any of the information in today's video, I will give the sources in the description. If there's a screen grab on screen, I will reference it. So again, there's a lot more further reading on this. But for now, let's talk about the hardware shortages. What we know, the existing impacts. Now, let's all say it together. Peter Pandemic himself is one of the biggest causes currently of this. We're getting the aftermath of the pandemic, that global shift in the way people behaved and bought and the impacts on the supply chains is being felt very, very heavily now. It's, I would argue not the biggest impact and some companies are pointing at the pandemic as the main reason when it isn't. It's just a very convenient excuse in some cases. And again, we're not going to add to too much detail on that, but still, I will, of course, have to highlight the pandemic in places, but I would argue it is not the biggest impact right now, and I will try to not really reference it unless I think it is actually relevant. So let's get the pandemic stuff out of the way. Um, the biggest impact that the pandemic had and indeed still has on uh, hardware shortages right now is unpredictability of buying patterns. One of the clearest examples that everyone spoke about before was the automotive industry. Cars, vans, lorries, you name it. There was a big shift during the early stages of the pandemic during those buying patterns. A lot of um, hardware, uh, 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 the manufacturers of, let's just call them car manufacturers for the sake of ease, um, they were started seeing those buying chain, uh, trends change very rapidly at the start of the pandemic. No one was going out. There were lockdowns all across the, the world. There were, you know, hospitality closures, people working from home. And long story short, a lot of those car manufacturers just ceased ordering components or needing components. And this was also the case at the point of distribution uh, and manufacture of semiconductors of components and where all of these resources were being channeled at the point of production before the supply chain. The result was that 
all of the hardware resources that would have been put towards um, car manufacturing, again, which is using car as a blanket term, um, they were diverted into other things. What were those other things? Of course, laptops, home working environment stuff, basically all of the tech people needed to be able to continue their jobs and industries to continue moving forward remotely. However, even though hardware manufacture towards car development and transport in general did slow down, it rapidly escalated in the second half of 2020 and early 2021 in a way that no one predicted. Consequently, suddenly there had to be a buyer shift into where hardware was going. And the result was that despite car manufacturers thinking they're not going to need to sell as much or there there aren't going to be as much buying power, suddenly there was. There was a lot more national travel, a lot more national vacations rather than international. Now, where does the rest of the globe come into this? Well, people wanted to get out GoPros. They wanted to go console buying. They needed to work from home. They needed to get their components in order. They needed to set up home workstations. They needed to get stuff for themselves. All this extra buying power went into those pieces of equipment and the result was that you ended up, rather than having trackable buying patterns that manufacturers have been following for years, where they've got, it's the season for this, it's the season for this, the season for this, you suddenly had a melting pot of different countries and different towns, cities, regions, continents, buying different things at different times than they normally would and overlapping in the hardware manufacturing sector and the production of everything from chips to you know the boards the semiconductors inside were completely out of sync and this caused it uh, this caused tremendous difficulty at the point of manufacture something that is being felt even now as the resync hasn't happened everyone's out of sync in terms of the hardware they buy and the hardware they need now this is made exponentially worse when you look at most hardware when it is produced at mass production on bulk this goes to nas it goes to storage media and it goes to home and uh, leisure uh, devices allocation uh, at the point of production is done much much further in advance if something is released at the end of 2020 you can be pretty sure that allocation for a lot of the components and resources go back to 2019 maybe even sooner the result is that those agreements that went in place for all of those hardware resources, they still had to be fulfilled. They were paid for, investment was secured in them. Companies couldn't just pull that investment out. The result is that's why we're seeing a lot of hardware sticking around longer than it normally would. Any NAS buyer that follows this channel will know, will be asking regularly two questions when it comes to the two British brands on this uh, platform that we talk about in NAS. One, why hasn't Synology released their new series of disk stations for home? And why has QNAP taken so long to release their latest hardware, even though we know about it? The hardware shortages and the, um, the difficulty with allocation of stock levels, when all of that money, all of those resources are locked in old hardware right now, the brands need to sell through. They need to maximize that investment. The problem is... When people know about the new releases, you end up with a catch-22 situation. You end up with brands with all of their finance locked into hardware that is being deemed old. People are waiting for the new stuff, but the brands need to shift the old stuff. This is how that global desynchronization of releases happens and why we're seeing increasingly different regions in the world having access to new releases and other ones not traditionally europe and the uk and the us would have had access to the latest releases at exactly the same time as the east this is something we're seeing considerably less now some brands like synology are opting to not release things at all because they know the impact of that knowledge on the rest of the world just because they release something in the east doesn't keep it a secret it's not the 80s anymore the result is, if they do that and it's not available in the West, people aren't going to buy the existing range of solutions in the UK, in Europe, in um, the whole of America, Canada, all of it. So they have. So some companies like Synology are sitting on new products and new plans, whereas companies like QNAP, for good or for bad, the knowledge is out there on their new releases. And although you can pick up a new TS-464 very easily in the East, 
In the West, it is considerably harder. You can get the old devices. Great, they're all out there, the old devices. But unfortunately, the old devices, if one, they're not being reduced because they can't afford to reduce the pricing. This is, And this same model can be spread across any number of different kinds of hardware in 2022. Not just NASs, pretty much everything from laptops to mobile phones. This is an increasing problem that the hardware shortages are causing. So I just dogpiled quite a lot on consumer trends right there, but it's not just consumer trends that is the problem. There is climatical issues, there is general natural issues that are causing these hardware shortages. Some we already discussed in previous videos, but some have escalated even further. Now, one of the ones I refer to quite a lot when it comes to um, semiconductor shortages is to do with the droughts in Taiwan. Semiconductor shortages and the stress that have been placed on those industries while they've been trying to fulfill existing buying patterns and facilitate an ever-growing demand for um, computer devices or any kind of computer linked devices have forced the production of those refinement centers and those resource alloc um, allocation centers in Taiwan to be working to breaking point and you need a lot of water and that sounds really silly for um you know a water surrounding country like taiwan to have a drought but the refinement centers still need to clean that water and the amount of water coming through and utilized in the production of semiconductors has caused these enormous droughts taiwan is still the biggest producer of semiconductors in the world and although a lot of efforts have been made in the last two, two and a half years, caused by other factors I'll talk about later on, to produce more and more semiconductors in other regions of the world. These other places have been hit by the same issues in a different way. We can look at things like Texas, where you've got an enormous amount of um, semiconductor shortages being kind of provisioned by Eastern and indeed Western companies and bankrolled by them to produce their own semiconductors. And these have been hit by their own natural disasters caused by erratic, erratic weather conduct, um, um, issues caused by climate crisis. So for example, you've got um, unpredictable weather and uh, a low temperature weather affecting a lot of the production centers in Texas. Then you've, again, you've got summers that have been too hot, which have then caused the droughts, which have then caused the exact same problems in Taiwan. But when you are heavily inland country without ready access to water in the same way, it exacerbates these problems on these smaller operations. So the impact of climate crisis is something that when it comes to hardware shortages, people always seem either keen to ignore or keen to not address as a front facing problem. The climate crisis when it comes to production of a lot of these hardware resources is a bigger issue than a lot of people seem to be prepared to address. Finally, we've got social and political problems. And this is the one that I think gets, if not the most headlines, it doesn't get the most understanding because you've got to filter down how these things impact. Now, you can call out things like Brexit, of course. And again, that is more of an international problem when it comes to the relationship between the UK and Europe, something that even myself have to deal with every day when it comes to the transit of goods. And in this country, we had not enough lorry drivers and then you had things like the Irish backstop and things moving around but these are national concerns I'm going to be talking more right now about the global issue and the global issue really has come down to two major ones in the last two to two and a half years the first one was the US China trade war something that began in it in earnest in 2019 this is something that is still continuing to now in its multifaceted ways as they try to resolve this through two different political administrations now what this has been caused by and again there's lots of things people point at Huawei and again that was a big security related matter there but the ultimate um, back and forth of this comes down to two countries not giving way, or two um, entities not giving way. And this has resulted in high tariffs on goods moving back and forth, restrictions on certain goods or volumes of goods back and forth, and therefore the impact of those on hardware shortages of not just components, but whole devices. And this is another area where 
frequency of goods has depreciated considerably. So even even though you know there's new iPhones, know that there's new laptops and devices and chipsets and GPU cards, and you're already thinking about cryptocurrency being a pain, and again, I'm not going to mention cryptocurrency in this video, um, when it comes to the back and forth and the effects of the US-China um, trade war, the result has been that goods that have moved back and forth have either been so incredibly delayed that they have lost value simple chronologic, uh, simply chronologically or that the actual amount of goods that have gone back and forth because the additional cost to move them around has made these goods ever rarer and therefore has made them almost inaccessible in terms of price and physical access. Of course, the other big factor is the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Regardless of your side on this, you cannot ignore the fact that it has had an enormous impact on global transport of goods. Now, that's not the only um, big point, and we will get to that, but um, air, air freight uh, logistical road freight and even sea freight have been hugely affected by this one because of lanes and methods uh, and directions of transport have been affected by how things move and the way in which they move them when they've had to move around zones or just have no fly no travel zones in place but an enormous impact on fuel costs. Um, something that we've been hearing a lot globally right now is, the, um, is a cost of living crisis. Um, and part of the rises in the cost of a lot of things is to do with gas, electricity, petrol, fuel, just general fuel. And when it comes down to it, the Ukraine-Russia or Russia-Ukraine conflict, no matter what hat you want to put on, the result of this is that general freight cost of goods has gone up exponentially. And once you add those hardware shortages, component shortages, lower frequency of goods altogether, what you end up with is the cost of moving something from A to B now costs considerably more than getting it from A to Z right now. And that's without the cost of the goodies in the middle of it. But that's not it. When we go back to components, go back to chips and production in the point of manufacture, Ukraine was one of the world's biggest producers and suppliers of neon, another element utilized in a lot of chip production between 45 and 54 percent. Now that um, being that big supplier of that during this conflict and the control of goods moving in and out and indeed people feet on ground producing neon, this is another enormous negative factor in terms of hardware availability and component access globally. <clears throat> These have been the biggest factors of why a hardware shortage that in 2019 everyone went, oh, it's going to be bad for a year, has spiraled out of control. And the worst thing is, the most depressing point of this, I can't say when I think it would end. Every journal I've read in preparation for this video, for the Data News of the Week video, and for previous videos, they all seem to speculate 18 months, and then six months later, 18 months, and then six months later, 18 months. Because ultimately, even if you solve one of the things that I talked about today, there are five or six others that are crumbling all the time. Now, will there be a re resolution? Yeah, there will be. I'm not going to say 18 months, but there will be a re uh, resolution. But the problem is, the resolution is going to be that everything's just going to cost more. The state of play, the general state of equipment, it's all just going to cost more. And ultimately, that's going to be the resolution. Prices are going to have an enormous leap, and that will remain. That will become the status quo. Unfortunately, that is as good a resolution as there will be to this. I know that is incredibly pragmatic, and I know how cynical that sounds, but that is genuinely the output we're looking at here. Now, as I mentioned, there are lots of other factors I have not really delved into in a greater degree of detail here. The effects of cryptocurrency, Chia, as well as your normal Bitcoin, and its impact on the environment. Not really talked about Brexit there, because I thought that was more national, and I've not talked about you know, obviously issues within individual countries, be it governmental, political, or social. So if there are things that you think I have not touched on that are key, key factors on why there are still hardware shortages in 2022 moving forwards, 
please let me know in the comments. I'm doing a whole article on this over on NAS Compares, and I will add your additional concerns to there. Once again, the resources I've utilized for today's video will either be linked in the description or linked on the NAS Compare article that should be out at the same time as this video. Do let me know in your comments what you think are the additional factors that I may have missed. And otherwise, before I lose my voice utterly, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed the video, subscribe to learn more, and I will see you next time.